Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. Let's look at uh, a material selection model. So in terms of the bicycle, I'm more or less reliant on um, common knowledge. What are the materials out there that a lot of bicycle companies tend to use in the construction of um, bicycles? So we've got aluminium alloy, we've got titanium, we've got structural steel, we've got uh, carbon reinforced um, polymer composite, and we've got bamboo. So using the material database from CES, what you can do is you can look at the performance index. So in this case, we're looking at strength to mass and stiffness to mass. So what are the things I need? I need to know what the density of the materials are. I need to know what the elastic models or the yard models are for the various materials and the yield limit. Because um, it's always best to at first acknowledge um, designing whatever the component is to operate within the elastic region of a given component of the of a given material. So these are the densities. So aluminium, uh, twenty seven hundred uh, kilograms per meter cube. Titanium, forty six ten. Structural steel, seventy eight hundred. Uh, carbon uh, composite, uh, fifteen hundred fifty. And bamboo, six hundred and ninety nine point five. Um, the elastic modulus, so for aluminium, 72, uh, structural steel, 210, and bamboo. So again, this is clear to view. However, you can also include a differentiating factor. So here, we're going to look at what the impacts of these indices are when it comes to cost. So what are the implications? So the first metric or performance index, M1, looks at the stiffness parameter so stiffness to density and when we put these values so we put in the density and the young's uh, young's modulus these are the numerical data that we get and since we're looking at maximizing m to enable us to select the best material that gives excellent stiffness with respect to reduced mass it indicates here that carbon reinforced composite is the best one to consider since it has the highest value again we can look at metric two so this time we're looking at the strength to mass uh, performance index m2 so we'll be using sigma y over rho and again put in the values that we've extracted from the material database is indicating that carbon fiber is the best material but what happens when we introduce the cost element? So when we introduce the cost element, so again, what is you know the matrix per cost? It then changes things a bit. So in this regard, we are we're now having a structural steel exhibiting the best value for money when we're looking at uh, stiffness to mass. And when we're looking at strength to mass, again, it's indicating that structure would still be the best material to choose. So it kind of makes sense as to why, when it comes to mass volume production of bicycles, structure still tends to be um, the most common uh, material used in fabricating um, bicycle uh, frames. However, when it comes to bespoke or low uh, production volume of bicycle frames particularly towards a high-end market and where um, the performance is important in terms of strength stiffness to you know the lightweightness of um, a given uh, bicycle design then carbon fiber is the common one or the best material to use as indicated by uh, the performance index so again you can use this um, approach um, in conjunction with um, CES to enable you, you know, filter and identify the best material, you know, that your outline objectives governs.
Let's look at another example. So this brings us to the example that we looked at last week. So last week we used the constraint based model to identify the material um, best for the design of the chair leg, assuming that there's going to be you know, variation in the thickness. So from um, that particular tutorial, we realized that the smaller the sectional thickness would be, the higher the value of A. But what is the caveat to that? The higher the stiffness, the more difficult it would be to fabricate. So we need to look at, you know, the material that gives the ideal balance in terms of ideal uh, resilience to buckling, ideal um, sectional thickness so that you're not um, increasing um, the laden weight of uh, the unladen weight of the chair. And you also need to think about, you know, um, how light uh, the material also needs to be. When it comes to this particular activity, we're going to look at um, using CES. So CES uses an objective-based model where uh, the material constraint tends to be the focus. So the constraint base, we focus on the functional constraint and the geometric constraint. But when it comes to objective-based modeling, the geometric and functional constraints are fixed. So your variability will be via the material. So these are the objectives. So to reduce the material condition by reducing the sectional thickness of um, the leg and to also minimize and reduce the effects of buckling. So we're trying to increase the material's uh, resilience to uh, compressive loading. So as stated at the beginning, um, the engineering performance index is a function of the functional, geometric and material constraint. But when it comes to CES, the emphasis is on the material constraint. So for us to analyze the effect of um, how stiff the material is against uh, compressive load due to how slender uh, the section of variance needs to be, we're going to be looking at um, this index. So I've proved this um, in the previous uh, example, uh, but I'm not going to use that because the mathematics is a bit uh, complicated. But this is essentially uh, the index. And if you look at um, what's on CES, you realize that when it comes to looking at uh, a similar model, this is the performance index that's been outlined. Okay, so the performance index M will be equal to e to the power half or the square root of e divided by the density. So we're going to look at a range of material that have similar characteristics as defined by the performance index. So now that we've identified um, the best um, performance metrics to use, um, the whole idea is to now use that information to, uh, to plot a graph. And once we've plotted the graph by means of identifying what would be the slope of um, the graph, we can then identify the range of materials uh, that conforms to our design specification. So the whole concept when it comes to CES is the further you move the graph leftwards, M maximizes. If you move the graph rightwards, you then minimize it. M. So the whole objective is to maximize M to give you the best performance that conforms to the performance index. So if you're looking at stiffness to density, if you move it leftwards, the density that's characterized by the X axis reduces. So again, the smaller the value of the density, the lighter it will be. And if you move it in that um, vector, the higher the Young's modulus, the stiffer the material will be. But as I stated, we don't want the material to be excessively stiff. The whole idea is based on transforming the performance index using logarithm to define the equation as a linear graph. So we know from uh, first principles that you know the y axis, um, the y variables is dependent on a constant or the y intercept. The, uh, the gradient and the changes with respect to x. When it comes to the slope, we're interested in the gradient. 
So depending on what the performance index is, it will define the nature of the slope. So back in my time where we didn't really have, you know, um, the graphs converted into the software that you guys have at the moment, we had to use first principles to enable us, you know, plot the needed graphs to identify the best material um, moving forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compare, you know, the use of uh, old uh, methodology and compare that to, you know, using the software to see if we come to the same conclusion. So based on what I have here, it's indicated that the range of materials that best conforms to um, um, the design of the bicycle frame constitutes of uh, rigid uh, polymer foam, um, Vosigot's natural materials such as wood, whether it's high, soft, bamboo, but we also got some technical um, ceramics and technical ceramics are very difficult to machine. So we have to do a bit more to filter out um, our range. So this is where we apply what's called limits. So what I can do is I can create a limit in terms of the density. So what range of materials in terms of the density am I interested in? And I can do likewise in terms of the elastic modelers. So what the minimum um, stiffness I desire from a material, what is the maximum um, stiffness that is desired in terms of the materials that we do select. So here, the limit that I set for the density is looking at materials that have densities equal to uh, a thousand kilograms per meter cube or less. Okay. So based on that, I drift the graph, you know, leftwards to maximize what M will be. And I also set limits in terms of what the minimum desired uh, elastic models needs to be. So this is set at one GPA and the maximum um, set just under a hundred uh, GPA. So by introducing the limits, that then filters out um, the technical uh, ceramics, because that's a state to be quite difficult to uh, machine and fabricate. Thus, make it, you know, processing um, the ceramics very, very expensive. And it also eliminates uh, the foams because, particularly with the uh, polymeric foam, it's still not very um, strong. And also, if it were to be metallic, very difficult to machine. So that's filtered out um, everything, and we're left with natural materials. So your bamboos, your woods, things like that. So, okay. So this is basically what um, is indicated. That's why I inferred in the last tutorial. You can't limit um, your decision on uh, materials based on one set of um, parameters. You need to expand that range. Because again, you need to think about the operational parameters over time. You may need to think about what the manufacturing uh, uh, implications are and other factors to enable you make you know, the right decision uh, moving forward in terms of the best material that's suitable for your product. This is where I'm now using the CES um, selector software. So similar to the example I just shown, I'm mapping uh, the Young's models that characterize the stiffness of uh, the material to the density. And by identifying um, the slope of the graph to be two, it then automatically introduces um, the line graph. So by using the mouse, you can then drift the graph to wherever you want it to be. So by drifting the graphs in the two, uh, the position and what I did um, using the old techniques, it's identifying similar materials. So again, we've got our uh, range of uh, polymeric foam. We've also got our natural uh, material selection that's constituted of wood, uh, whether it's hard or soft like oak, pine, and bamboo. And it's also indicated some technical ceramics similar to um, the previous example. So what do we do? We then have to now introduce limits. So the more limits you use, the narrow the material field becomes. 
at the moment, uh, our data and our metrics is indicating that bamboo is probably the best material to select. But as I've um, inferred, you can't just base the selection on a few criteria. You need to look at your design specification to look at a whole range of criteria to enable you identify the best material of choice. Because sometimes if your focus is on, you know, the functional parameter, that's not necessarily me that it checks the boxes when it comes to, you know, uh, recycling or material recovery and, you know, the needed manufacturing processes to, you know, yield uh, the component that you're trying to design. So you may have to look at other parameters too. To enable me confirm whether bamboo is the ideal choice for the bicycle frame, I'm going to now look at another property called fracture toughness. Uh, fracture toughness is basically a material's capability of, you know, controlling or reducing the rate of crack propagation uh, within its structure. Um, as um, hopefully you guys do know when you did your uh, material uh, module in year one, when it comes to the transformation of material from its pri uh, from its raw state to its primary state, it does introduce a few uh, microscopic defects that you can't necessarily control. However, if the material has that capability of controlling, you know, uh, crack propagation from these um, localized defects, then it's a, uh, it's a property that's worth considering. So that over time, you know, you're not having a situation whereby you're having migration of these defects that will come together to increase the residual stress at that localized region to instigate crack propagation, particularly when it comes to the nature in which um, the structure is being loaded. You know, so when you ride a bicycle, you're having that fluctuation in the structure and that could cause accelerated crack propagation leading to eventual failure of the component. Thus, fracture toughness. So by doing that, using the same methodology, um, that helps reduce or confirm uh, the material fill. Based on that, using bamboo will be uh, the best way forward. And again, using uh, uh, general knowledge, you know, bamboo is a natural resource. Thus, you know, um, it has a minimum impact on the environment. So at the end of life, bamboo can easily be recovered and downscaled to other applications. Um, the only issue will be um, its um, measure of how renewable it would be. So that's the only bit that's uh, nudging there. But for the time being, um, I think it would be the best material um, to consider. Bye -bye.